We're back in America! We are finally home after traveling for the last eight months. Can't wait to share what we have coming up next, but first, we need to talk about India. So we started our three weeks in India down in Fort Kochi in the state of Kerala. Day one in India. Let's see what this country is all about. So our first day in Kochi, we went and explored the city for a little bit and ended up down on the beach. Nice sneak up on Jenna in her natural habitat. We just came to the beach and now we're stuck in the middle of a music video. We saw how incense was made. And later that night, we went down and saw a local dance performance. So this region of India is known for the backwaters. And so we arranged for a day trip to go check it out. We got toddies from this guy in a canoe, which is fermented <laughs> palm leaves. Yeah. <laughs> What are you drinking? Toddy. So after we had our little kombucha buzz going, we went and had some local food, which was delicious. So one thing that we'll never be able to do is eat like the locals in India. It's all with their hands. Indian food is our favorite, so we couldn't wait to eat nothing but curry for three weeks. Nothing but curry. Nothing but curry. But it's not exactly the healthiest, because everything's just covered in oil and served with like a pound of bread and rice. Didn't stop us though. Yeah, we still ate it all. Tonight's one dollar dinner special. So our last day in Kochi, we went waterfall chasing. We found this hotel room next to the airport for only $19 a night. This is what you get when you splurge and spend $19 on a hotel room. And it was this entire apartment suite and we got room service. A taste of luxury that we hadn't had in a long time. Shower with an actual wall. We did not want to leave. But we had to leave the next day to fly up north. So we get to the airport, but... So we showed up at the airport. Apparently Air India has cancelled our tickets for unknown reasons. Not quite sure what's going on. I'm trying to figure it all out. At least we have free fruit. <laughs> and so we did not have a flight out. And then they wouldn't even let us get out of the airport. So one more night in Kochi before we could fly out the next day. We just wasted five hours at the airport. Enjoy. Back to the hotel. Next day, we get to Jaipur. Better late than never. And we head straight to Pushkar for the Camel Festival. So we arrive there, it's crazy. I don't even know how to describe this place. There's camels all decorated, kids painted blue, cows with extra limbs hanging off, snake charmers. And there's gypsies selling things everywhere. And religious ceremonies going on. It's just madness. This is the definition of feast for the senses. So it turns out we are actually the, the main attraction. We got bombarded with selfie requests literally every 30 seconds. It was never ending. Take a picture with Jenna. So one day we were in the main fairgrounds and taking selfies with people naturally. And one guy comes up to us and asks us if we want to be in... We just got coerced into signing up for an Indian bride and groom competition. No idea what we just got ourselves into, but it's gonna be an adventure. So they take us into the salon, and this Indian glam squad comes in and gets us ready. We get our outfits and our hair and makeup done and jewelry. Get closer. We're on our way to the competition. So after we're all ready, they rush us to the fairgrounds and we meet all the other contestants. No one has any idea what is going on. So they just tell us, go out there on stage and walk and dance like an Indian bride would do. Which you inherently know how to do, right? Yeah, well I forgot all my Indian dance moves, apparently. So this thing was more of a beauty contest with a runway and thousands of people screaming and watching. 
I don't remember what happened up there. I might have just blacked out. But there's a lot of TV cameras, bright lights. And guess what? I won third place. Yay! No idea how. I didn't win. They didn't like my American dance moves. After it's all over, we're ushered off stage. There's a fight that breaks out. So a fight just broke out between two photographers at the competition. Someone's grabbing Lucas for a TV interview, and it's just madness. Woo! Third place winner! Yeah. <laughs> it was a crazy night. It really kind of felt like a dream. So on our last day in Pushkar, we get up at 5.30 in the morning to go catch the sunrise and see some hot air balloons rise up over the city from one of the temples. It was the most crowded time at the whole fair. It's crazy how many people are out at 6 a.m. right now. So we basically just became stuck in this wall of bodies. Everyone's pushing from behind. We were stuck in the middle of it and there was no way out. We were holding on to each other so we wouldn't get separated and my bag was getting ripped from me. And I felt men's hands on my body groping me, but I couldn't do anything. So I grabbed one of the guy's hands and looked him in the eye and it took everything I had not to punch him because then we would have been trampled. It's, it's the closest that I've ever been to a stampede. One of the scariest experiences in my life. It definitely changed the way I felt about India from that point. The day we left Pushkar, I woke up with a flu. Jenna got the flu, not feeling so well. So after our experience that morning, we were so ready to leave. We grabbed one of the public buses for the four-hour trip over to Jaipur. Well, Jaipur is known for its handicrafts and jewelry. We thought it'd be the perfect place to have his wedding band custom made. Jenna got her ring custom made in Brazil. I was going to get mine custom made in India. So the process was very simple, turned out perfect. Can't wait to actually put it on my finger. As for the rest of Jaipur, the city itself was filthy, it was smoggy, loud. Pretty much the last place you want to be when you're sick. One bright spot though, is we took a day excursion over to a place called the Monkey Temple. So after a few days in Jaipur, we took our first train in India over to Agra. First India train experience, starting now. This is our train compartment for the next four hours. We show up and there was just a haze laying over the whole city. You can't see the sky at all, it's just white and it has this very specific smell that just soaks into your skin and clothing. Just cow, looking for a budget room. The next morning, we are up before dawn to get in line to get our tickets for the Taj Mahal. But the gates don't open until after 7, so you don't get the actual sunrise. But the crowds still weren't too bad and we were able to take some pretty good photos. I think the pollution actually adds a nice touch. It's very ethereal looking. That was the one positive out of it, is it made everything kind of seem like you were in a dream. A very smelly dream. <laughs> <laughs> the next day we went to an elephant sanctuary. I had done research beforehand on ethical sanctuaries in India, and it turns out this was the only one I was able to find. It's called Wildlife SOS, and it runs on volunteers and donations. So there are plenty of elephant camps and sanctuaries that claim they do good, but behind the scenes, they are all they're doing is torturing these animals to domesticate them. They use tools to torture them and basically break their spirit. That's so sad. Do your research before you visit one of them and make sure that what they do there is actually ethical. So at the sanctuary we went to, some of the elephants were blind, some were injured, but they were so sweet and so gentle. It really was a neat experience, and it, it's even better that we know that we donated to a good cause. That evening, we were on a sleeper train to Kajrao. So Kajrao is a small town out in the country, and it is known for its temples. 
We found this yoga and meditation center, so we decided to make our own little retreat out of it. So it was great. We did yoga every morning. We rented bicycles and drove around to all the temples. It was a very relaxing experience. On our last night, we drove out to a house in the country with everyone from our hostel and had a barbecue for some local Indian food, a bonfire. It was a great time. We did not want to leave. But we already had another overnight train booked to Varanasi. Varanasi is situated on the Ganges River and is considered the holiest city in all of India. Families come from all over the country to bathe in the river and cremate their dead. After we arrived, we were walking along the river and we came up to this burning ghat. Now there's two burning ghats in Varanasi, which is where they do the cremations. It was just the most interesting scene. There were bodies being burned, there's goats walking around in t-shirts, there's this guy sitting on a pedestal ringing a bell. It was crazy. So we just sat there for hours on the steps and tried to make sense of what was going on. So the next morning we got up before dawn to get on a boat and see the city from the river. We are up at 5.30 in the morning to go take our friend Rarul's boat here out on the Ganges River. Sunrise is definitely the best time to experience Varanasi. There's smoke and candles and boats everywhere. It's unlike anything else. These ceremonies along the river go on 24-7. I don't think they ever sleep. Can we just talk about how unsanitary this place is for a second? The ground is just covered in cow dung and trash because there's no trash cans anywhere. People are spitting tobacco everywhere. There's never any toilet paper in the bathrooms. And people eat with their hands. I don't understand. But the worst part is that the Ganges River, while known as a holy river, they believe it can never get dirty. There's dead bodies floating in there, there is so much trash in there, and we saw people brushing their teeth in the water. We've been backpacking for eight months, so we're not fancy at all, trust me. But it really doesn't get dirtier than what we experienced in India. And that night, took the overnight train to Delhi. 14 hours to Delhi. This is the before. You don't even want to see the after. <laughs> so it was delayed, it took about 16 hours. But we finally made it to our very last city. Delhi was very loud, very crowded, as expected, and actually had a similar feel to Bangkok for us. The shopping was great. We were able to stock up on Christmas gifts. We even found one of the areas with all of the wood crafters and saw them carving up these those corbels that we saw them working on, or doors. Only shipping wasn't so expensive. One thing I've been wanting to do on this trip is take a cooking class. So we found a lady who was offering cooking classes out of her home. And we spent about four hours with her cooking our dinner. Indian food's really complicated. But it was easily the best food we had in India, maybe even the best on this trip. And now we know how to make it at home! On our last day, we decided to do something a little crazy. Somehow the idea of getting tattoos came up. Started as a joke, but the next day we found ourselves in a tattoo parlor. We never planned to do this. In fact, I'd always said I'd never get a tattoo. What did you sign up for? <laughs> but I think we wanted to do something big to memorialize the trip. Janet's getting her tattoo. I'm actually getting a tattoo right now. So I got two camels, which represent me and Jenna. Um, being led by a little guy, which represents kind of the what or why or our purpose in life. So it kind of represents the adventure that life is and what we're trying to accomplish in it. Mine says gratitude in Arabic because gratitude is what I've gained most from this trip and traveling really gives you a perspective on life and you just realize how fortunate you are. I am grateful for every day that I have on this earth. And I'm grateful for you and having you in my life. Mm -hmm. India, you got me.